Thank you very much for joining my session here. I am Eric. I am a normal user, which uh, means I'm not a developer. And I love free software. And that is the main reason why for a long time I resisted to get myself a smartphone. Because actually, I, I think I had no choice because either I could get myself an iPhone, but then I get locked into the Apple proprietary world, or I could get myself an Android, and then I get locked into the Google tracking, uh, and I didn't want it both until someone told me about custom ROMs, which are basically forks from Android without the Google apps, and about F-Droid, which is a free software app repository that delivers you hundreds and thousands of free software apps. And since then, now I'm a happy smartphone user using free software on my smartphone. And today I wanted to share my experience with that and uh, hopefully enable you also to achieve freedom on your devices. Oh, now is my screen off here. It's also there off. It's not my computer, so I hope it works out. Um, yeah, so I wanted to share my experience that I have with Android uh, with you. Um, and first, I want to shortly know who who of you knows already Android. Oh, that's quite a lot. Okay, that's cool. So then I hope I can tell you something new and share my my uh, best apps that I know from Android. I will shortly talk about. Android and uh, and free software and the free software environment with Android and then I will talk about Android. So I guess you all know, especially as you use a lot of Android here, a lot of Android users here. I guess you know what is free software, but just to be sure, when I say free software, then I talk about the software that gives you the four freedom four freedoms to use, study, share, and improve the software. The the problem with the Android system. Basically, the, the Android system itself is a Linux-based operating system, and it's free software. But by default, it's delivered with uh, Google Apps, and they are not free software. They are proprietary software, so Gmail, Gmaps, YouTube, and so on. So you get, by default, you get binary blobs on your system, and maybe worse, Normally, you buy a phone. If you do not buy a Nexus, you buy a phone with a third-party reseller. They add more proprietary software on it, like Facebook uh, app or Amazon or whatever, soccer app, what is out there. And so by default, you have binary blobs on your phone. That is a problem because you don't know the usual problems you have with proprietary software. You don't know exactly what it is doing and you cannot control what it is doing. And in this case, often with Android, you cannot even uninstall it, so um, you are lost with that. The solution to this, in short, but it's actually a very complex topic and uh, very technical, but uh, in short, the solution to this is you can root your phone, and when you root your phone, then afterwards, you can install a uh, alternative operating system. So this is basically called custom ROMs because that the Android system is a free software system. There are forks out there and they can use the system itself and then they can free it from the Google apps and then they republish it as you are used to do with free software. So you can get these custom ROMs and install them on your phone. There is a whole universe out there with different custom ROMs uh, serving different needs and aspects of <laughs> software. Uh, I have here the, I have just chosen two to show you because the um, Replicant, the first here, is a custom ROM developed by the FSF, the Free Software Foundation, and it has uh, basically it's 100% free software down to the driver. It's all free software, so if you're really into free software, this is the this is the custom ROM to choose. But does not work with every phone. And so in contrast, I have a Lineage OS, that's a very popular custom ROM. 
it uses the drivers, the original drivers from the manufacturer, but therefore it also works with a lot of phones out there. So once you have the custom ROM, then you can install F-Droid. What is this talk about? And uh, this is also the easiest option here. This is the, the logo from F-Droid. This is also the easiest step in the whole process. And uh, you can also start backwards. And if you do not yet know F-Droid here, you can basically, you can also install it on your normal Android phone. You can directly start, basically, while I'm giving my talk, you can aside, you can install F-Droid and check out the nice features that I tell you. And that's why I wanted to focus on this step here in my talk. So as I already said, F-Droid is a free software app repository, so it's basically similar to, you know, from the Google Play Store or Amazon Marketplace or things like that. You have a repository full of only in this case, only free software apps. And also, it's a client. And with that client, you can access this repository. The thing is, to, to get the client once, you have to download it from the internet, because it's not in, in competitive stores for compe competition reasons. They don't offer this. So, I mean, you can search in the internet or type in that, that URL. So we have to download it once and install it. And then once you have it installed, then it basically looks like this. If you start it the first time, this is how your screen looks like. And what you see here is the, the latest, the newest changes to, to the repository. So either the newest app or if there was an update on, some on an already existing app, it will also appear again here in the stream. And it's the design is with the tiles. Um, yeah, so you see the latest apps here. Then you have a search function also here to look for apps if you search for an app. And uh, you have a category section where you can browse apps by topics. If you look for games or development or office or whatever category you're looking for, you can browse the repository and you will see all the apps if you dig deeper, so if you choose for an app, you want to look at an app, then you get this view here. So you see a description of the app, you see the latest uh, change log, a description, and you also see anti-features. Anti so you are warned um, depending on the app what, what it does. So it, for example, it tracks your GPS activity, or in this case, because Newpipe is a free software replacement for the YouTube app. And in this case, it says, so this app promotes non-free network services. And if you scroll, this is basically if you scroll further down, you see more options. So you see the option to donate for the developers. You see uh, all kinds of meta information. You see the license that is used. You see you can access the source code the website and so on and really nice I think is also that you see minimum the latest three versions of the app so you can downgrade upgrade as you like because maybe you don't like the new features improved or it does not work with your system or something so it gives you here the full control over the version that you like to use and talking about the donations it's the it's this time of the year, but also in other times of the year. I want to use this occasion to say free software heavily depends also on your financial contributions. Help if you like free software, choose uh, choose some project that you like to support. Please consider donating and protect freedom by doing that. Going on, uh, of course, you also have an uh, administration interface in F-Droid. There's a lot of things that you can do. I want to highlight um, the that you can, of course, you can manage your the apps that you have installed via F-Droid, and you can manage the repositories that you use, which I will explain in a minute. 
on this slide I want to highlight here more that you can also use the Tor services to connect with the with the repository if you are in need of um, advanced uh, privacy and anonymity then you can use the Tor services here also with the Afdroid talking about ins managing the installed apps I think it's very intuitively what you see here you have uh, you see in this case the apps I have installed and uh, that need an update and you can either ins update them all at once or individually more interesting and uh, maybe less uh, intuitively is the repositories so when you install Afdroid by default it is connecting to the Afdroid repository this repository is a collection of free software apps and uh, free software apps only there are some things you have to apply to get into this into the repository and else you will not end up there but what you can do you can also set up your own repository or as a user you can add additional repositories so in this case you see there is also the guardian project for example and the micro g repository connected for the 35c3 here there's also a special repository uh, with the schedule and with the c3 uh, nav the power here is that you can use the afdroid client for multiple re for multiple stuff so i was reading a very interesting story from Thorsten grote he was in cuba and in cuba the bandwidth is very expensive so they go uh, into they need basically wi-fi to to get more to get there to to download from the internet and there was this internet cafe and this internet cafe was offering their they was were setting up their own repository where they put apps in um also proprietary apps also non-free apps f that they collected from other sources for their customers so they, they could download it there and this way they were spreading the software basically to the people or if you are a developer and you have your software in the alpha or beta version or even in the final version then you can also use this you can set up your own repository and spread your software via this repository and uh, even if you do not apply it to whatever the afdroid repository asks you to yeah we just said this you can add this is how it basically looks like if you add an own repository and you can also put a repository into the the onion uh, web and uh, afdroid can connect to this repository as well so this is also a very enhanced um, privacy and anonymity feature finally the a very powerful thing that Afdroid can do is it can help you to share software without having the need of internet connection so if you don't have a internet connection you can nearby swap software so this is possible via uh, Wi-Fi so if both devices are in the same Wi-Fi you can share your app with someone else or via Bluetooth even so in near field range I can share an app with someone else without both having internet connection and even more you can if the other person does not have Afdroid yet you can first send them Afdroid and then you can share the app this is I think a very very powerful feature in particular for maybe less developed regions or regions in with less especially less internet connectivity or where it's too expensive remember the story from Cuba I told you people can go into the internet cafe download with the internet cafe repository software they want to have go home share the software with their neighbors with their friends with their families this is a very powerful feature from Afdroid so 
Is there any questions so far? Because else I'm going now to to talk about some of the apps that you can find in Afteroid and that I think are really cool to use and very helpful. If there are some questions now about the Afteroid itself, we could have uh, one or two questions because of the time. It's we just have space for one or two. Yes, please. Is this just just me, or is somebody else having this problem? <laughs> so the uh, question was that you get in Android uh, a later, no, an yes, an older version, then you get in the Google Play Store. Correct. Right. So it always tries to update the uh, yes, Android app. Yes, I understand. From the I guess this is because you have your Google services installed. I'm. I was not aware that because this is a very recent change. After it was not available in the Play Store so until recently then? It's what? Not available officially, I hear from the side. So I don't know how you can get it then. Uh, I have no uh, Google Play Store. I have I'm really no expert okay, of so a Google so Play so Store. So it's just me, thanks. Oh, how does it work? Yeah, so I guess um, try to get rid of your Google Play Store and the problem is fixed. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Good, then I uh, go on here now. No, no, there was another question. Okay, a second question, and then I will go on because of the time. And we can later have questions. Uh, about this nearby swap, does it... Uh, about swap, does that mean that uh, both persons have to have Android installed and the app that they're swapping has to be an app in the Android store and you have to have it pre-downloaded as a user, right? And you can only share the specific version. It means that one of the persons has to have Android and the app has to be in the Android store, yes. Okay, but because if this person then can first share, send Android to the second person, yeah. and after that, swap the app the, the other person likes to have. But if you then make your own custom repository, you could pretty much send anything as long as it's in your custom repository in Android? Or is it just the official repository? If the other person first. Um, then adds the repository in this case, okay. I would say. Which yeah. might then again have to have some internet connection for adding the repository. Yeah, but if you So have for custom repositories, I guess you first have to... But if you have a cap of on speed and amount of downloading, then adding repository isn't as heavy as adding the repository and downloading things from it, right? Sorry, I didn't... Get it from if, you're, if you have a cap on speed and amount of uh, downloaded data, then adding a repository and then getting the binary from a friend is not the same as adding the repository and the downloading from the internet, right? It should end up with the same app, <laughs> if this is the yeah. question. So you can basically so save So if you have bandwidth. internet, of course you can also, yeah, you can save some bandwidth. But I think, I guess, I mean, the main powerful feature here is, of course, to share software without from one device to the other without having the need of any internet or even Wi-Fi or something. You can okay. basically with the near field communication Bluetooth technology you can just swap software to the next device. I mean that is the main feature of it. Okay, thanks. But uh, yeah, but if bandwidth is very expensive, of course this is also ver um, yeah, like in Cuba then this is also a good thing. Good, I go on here now. We can later have questions again. Uh, but uh, as we had started a little bit late, I uh, want to go on here. There's just one, one thing in after all, this is might be a little bit annoying, especially if you are new. And this is, there is no rating system first. So if I start first start to use after all, I have uh, hundreds of apps and sometimes multiple apps for the same thing. So I look for a text editor, then I get 12 different text editors or something, or PDF viewers. And I have no idea which is better, which is worse, Why? where do they differ, or what is the experience with that, because there's no comment function, there's no rating system. So I'm a little bit overload, maybe. And even if I, this is, I just did it like two hours before my talk now, a search function, you look for navigation, what do I get is first I get fair email, and then second, okay, this is the C3 enough, then I get something about my local files, the RSS feed. This 
which is not what I was maybe looking for if I'm looking for a navigation software. And uh, that's why I now want to show you some of the apps I think are really helpful for you to make your first uh, start steps and the start. Talking about navigation, I travel a lot, so for me, a navigation software is very, very. In I'm uh, I'm in heavy need of a navigation software, and this is Osman is just uh, the perfect app for this. This is like a the how you say the Swiss Swiss knife for a navigation. It's based on OpenStreetMap. You see a screenshot here on the right side. OpenStreetMap, I guess you know, it's. Uh, the better version of any other map. No, it's the <laughs> it's the, like the Wikipedia version of uh, a map. So it's done by the users and by contributions, and it's very very detail rich. It's much much more in detail than the Google Map is normally. You can see here for here, for example, you see you can see every tree and the waste bin and and other stuff. There's, by the way, I've seen there's some um, OpenStreetMap booth uh, over uh, over here, so they can tell you much more than I can do now. But anyway, OpenStreetMap uh, it's OpenStreetMap based, and the very good thing about OpenStreetMap based uh, this app here is that you can download the map. So I can download the map before I go somewhere, and and then again I don't need any internet connection. I go to Cuba or I go to Morocco or so somewhere else. I download the map before. And then I have the full map on my mobile device. I can be in flight mode. I have no need of any internet connection. And I do not only have the full map, I have the full offline navigation system. I can go from point one to point B. I can record my trip. I have um, I have all the details with the, if I'm a hiker, I, uh, where is the better road for a hiker or for the car, if I drive with the car. I even have voice guidance and multiple languages available, uh, like going next, crossing to the left or to the right, and these kind of things. And everything of this is offline, and this is really, really powerful and works perfect. I did, I travel, I use it for my travels since many years, and uh, it works really, really good. It's a very, you can, oh yeah, no, you can also, by the way, you can also add your own marks on the map. So if you, I don't know, the place where you sleep or the place of the CCC or the best beer last night or something like this, you can put on the map and find it again. And you have a lot of add-ons also that you can use. Uh, for example, a hillshade layer, which if you are into hiking is very nice to have so we can see where is the better road to walk the better path to go you also have the altitude visible on the map and you have a um, much much more to add-ons you have nautic views and i don't know i'm using maybe 20 percent of what is available just to say so it's a very complex uh, system this add-on is really nice. I uh, want to highlight uh, uh, two more add-ons. This one here is from Wikipedia. And you can also download it. And it shows you basically every Wikipedia page that has a GPS location will be shown on your map, including the text of the page. The pictures are only available then online, but you can download the whole text also and use it offline. And when I go somewhere for my travels, I spend there two, three days, and then I spend two, three days more for discovering the city I am in. You basically have your personal tourist guide in your pocket. And you go somewhere, you see, oh, what is this for a nice church or monument or something? You can look it up. And as you see also, it's not only about um, buildings or, or landmarks. Everything that has a GPS mark, like here in this case, the place where Peter Fechter uh, was one of the first victims um, of the Berlin Wall's border control. So this is very interesting to use. And the, the other add-on, if you are into mapping, this is what I also really enjoy. You have a very, you have an add-on that makes it very simple to add 
information into the open street map so when I go somewhere there's a nice bar or whatever or a shop or something that I and I see it is not yet on the open street map it takes you one minute to mark the point say what it is and upload it to open street map and the world is just one bit better I think Osman is the best app that you can use and it's very complex but I know from my friends many people might uh, or some people might uh, prefer a more li nice visual version so this is where Maps.me comes in there's also I think uh, both by the way both uh, some of the apps in this case both I already told you are also in other stores sometimes they cost money even in Afteroid they are for no cost available always there's no in Afteroid you have no account you have no rating you have nothing basically but you can use you, you can get everything uh, yeah but that's it so as you can see here with Mesme it has a very nice uh, visualization of the buildings and uh, so if you walk around if you are into this Mesme is maybe the best choice it also has a uh, navigation available but it's generally le that's basically what it can do and it's uh, way way more simple than the Osman I was telling you before to finish my open street map um <laughs> my own street map related part again if you are into mapping street complete is a really nice app that I just discovered recently what it does is you can walk around and you see quests here that you can do like in if you tip on it then you will see what is this for a house number or uh, what is the name of this road what is the surface of this road and things like this and it's a little bit if you <laughs> if you know about geocaching or something like this it, it's a little bit similar you have quests you can follow and again you can make the map with each contribution a way better so I'm seeing my time I have to maybe speed up a little bit public transportation so if you're traveling talking about traveling you also want to use public transportation often because you have maybe no car with you this is where transporter comes in this is the app to use on the right side you see the those countries that are colored are the countries where you have access to the long distance uh, railways and all the dots that you can see are our major cities that or minor cities but cities anyway where you have access to the full public transportation network so I can use transporter for example to go from uh, one building in Paris to another building in Berlin and it will show me all the way where I have to change and so on it looks very uh, I guess intuitively so you have you say you want point A to point B and then it gives you the different options that you have and uh, where you have to change, where you have to walk, what time, how long it will take you as you I uh, might expect it from a public transportation app and uh, since last year is a very cool feature you can also see the same your way on the map again on the open street map and if you go from a to B you are a tourist and then you say oh nice I passed by uh, the this monument the Brandenburg tour the whatever it might be and you have this two hour ticket you can just drop out make a picture well have a walk go back and uh, and return to your way that's a nice feature I think so so much about transportation and the open street maps when you are when with your mobile phone you also often like to access your emails there is K9 is the preferred app here K9 has a uh, you can basically you can add multiple email accounts to administrate uh, you have unified inbox but you can also administrate them individually with folders and you have a threading here you see this on the right side this is one email thread and uh, yeah 
read and write emails with this application. If you use OpenPGP, then here's the Open Open Keychain is the name of this app. It's written here. I forgot to write it down here. So Open Keychain is the uh, the name of this app. The so you can also send and read, write and read encrypted emails. I personally do not do it because I don't like to have my private key on my mobile device in case I lose it. But other people do so, and I heard it works pretty good and uh, without any annoyances. Talking about mobile devices, you also often like to synchronize the data. You like to synchronize your contacts, your calendars, and your even your data, maybe. So this is where Duff Droid comes in. DuffDroid can manage your contacts and your calendars to synchronize them with uh, other devices, basically with uh, any any uh, computer connected to the internet, like a server. And talking about server, so of course you need something that is connected to the internet. This is where I recommend Nextcloud. Nextcloud is also over here. They can. I guess they can tell you m a way better and more than I can do, but Nextcloud, in short, is a is a you can use it on your server or on your on your web uh, on your web space, and um, and when you install it, by default, contacts and calendar is included, and then you have this on the right side. You can see here there's a like you know it from the maybe from the proprietary competitor uh, Dropbox, then you have different options how to how to share your data with a link or something. Or but in this case it's federated by the way, so we can also share it with other Nextcloud instances. And there is also an app for Nextcloud in the Afdroid store. So from my mobile to my next cloud to my running next cloud instance, I can uh, access my data with the browser or with the next cloud client, and I can sync my contacts and calendar with the DevDroid app. And this leads me basically into this situation. So I access my data from both devices, either with the client, because there's also a client for for the for GNU Linux distributions, so I can either access my data with the client or the browser, and uh, synchronize my contacts calendars, for example, with Thunderbird or any other client, and from my mobile with the DevDroid, and this leads into the situation basically where I have both in sync and just using free software. I'm personally a big music lover, so I was very happy when I discovered the uh, Clementine Remote app. Clementine is a music player, uh, and with this app, you can access the running application on your on your GNU Linux distribution. You have to be you have to access the same the same Wi-Fi, and uh, yeah, basically. You can remote control your running music, so you can play the next song or the last song. I mean, what you can do with music, louder, less loud. And uh, get the meta information in the music, written in the music. And a really, really nice feature, I think, for me is you when you double tap the, the running music, then it tries to access the lyrics from Wikia and, uh, yeah. So you can read also the lyrics while you sit on your couch and you control the music running. It's just awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and as we are here on a conference, I guess you might go to other conferences as well. There is a uh, Gigity or Gigity or however you pronounce it. I say Gigity now. Um, Gigity is used from multiple free software, especially free software, but generally uh, multiple bigger conferences. And 
you see here, this is a, the example on the right side, you see from RMLL in France this year, they had a lot of tracks, so each line is a track, and then you see what is running, the schedule that is running, and uh, you can go into each of the sessions, you get a description of the session, you can set a reminder here, and then your mobile will remind you that about the next session that you wanted to see, which is very helpful, I think, because often you get lost in, in some chit chat somewhere, and this will remind you that you wanted to see a session. You can share the session with other people and also, meanwhile, it, um, it warns you when you wanted to see two sessions at the same time and so helps you to decide what you would like to see. And because of the time, I'm not going more into detail of this. This is my basically my final app slide here just to show some more stuff that is available in Android and I guess many people might like to use. So there are messengers, of course, multiple messengers. And uh, I don't know if you know them, I guess Telegram, you know it's a, a messaging network. Briar as well. The Conversations is a client for Jabber XMPP. The Twitter uh, is uh, for social media, but mainly for, I mean, the symbol says basically for Twitter. The Master Lab is the same as Twitter, uh, but for, for Mastodon. And I have this PDF viewer here because I was, <laughs> I was installing a lot of PDF viewers until, <laughs> until I was happy. And I, I was happy with that new PDF viewer, so I thought to put it here. Also to show you, there are also games in Android uh, 2048, I guess many people know here. Shattered Pixel Dungeon, uh, that's where I spend a lot of hours of my life. And um, yeah, so, but I encourage you to look your for yourself. I just wanted to make some, you know, help you with the first steps or to share the, the good apps I think are in there. But I encourage you to look for yourself get after all it work play around i mean it's free software and it will it's in your hands and in your control and i hope that i could um you know, encourage you to do it there's one final thing before we can have uh, some questions i guess 5 minutes are left now i talked a lot about after all and now there's also G-Droid, <laughs> I think it's just so fun because it shows you also how the free software world is working. So G-Droid is basically a fork of F-Droid that uses again the same repository. It just has a little bit other visual interface. And uh, yeah, and then here I like this quote from D. Murphy who says, just use F-Droid to install G-Droid and that's basically everything you need to know about the concept of free software. Yeah, <laughs> I like this a lot. So thanks for listening, and uh, we have five minutes left. You can either have questions, or if you have an app that you think I missed to, to show you and is really cool and other people should know about, I think that's also a very valuable contribution here. Can you hear me? Yeah. I have a question because I was looking for notepad-like application on FDroid that I could, for example, write down shopping in, and all of them seemed a bit weird. Do you have something? To write like down what? Like shopping list for yourself or some notes when you're talking with somebody and you don't really feel like there is the tomboy pads, for example, on uh, 
Debian systems that is very similar to that, that you don't really care about it saved in a separate location, you mm. don't care about it being in special place, I just need for now nodes and they will probably move to somewhere else later. Okay. Actually, I don't know, I'm using, I'm just using a simple TXT file where I write down my nodes and then <laughs> that's all about my nodes, so I, I'm sorry, I cannot... I don't know, but I know from but if you pass by the FSV assembly, I know there's Andre Klöpfel, and he has a, he's a a big fan of some node app that I don't know yet here. But if you are really looking for, you can just ask Andre at the FSV assembly. Okay. We can also make uh, audio notes and everything. You can make writing notes, audio notes, video notes. It's a very powerful app. I don't know if someone do I manage here or <laughs> please um node apps that I really like are for one omni nodes, which you can do many different things with, like text nodes or lists, and then the simple shopping list. It's just shopping lists. <laughs> Behind you. Thanks. Uh, who's responsible uh, for the identity of the guys who put APKs in Asteroid? Um, so who manages, who gets to know, uh, who puts the uh, applications into Asteroid, and what is the process to identify malicious software? As I said in the beginning, I'm a user and not a developer. I never did put any software into the repository. So I'm not really sure uh, how the process is, but I have read uh, the there are some uh, there are some. It does not only has to be free software; it also has to be. You can have to compile it and be able to use it only with free software. Here, there's someone who knows much more than me. I I hear. Can you get wait for the microphone, please? Hi. So basically, we have a Git repository or GitLab where we put the metadata for the um, for the build, and we clone the Git repository of the application and have a build server to build it themselves and then sign it themselves. And if you are a developer, you can also do reproducible builds and sign it with your own key, and we will verify the build and then upload the APK. So it's all verified and open where the APK is coming from. Thank you. That's what I wanted to say too. <laughs> <laughs> Will you publish the slides or at least the titles of them? And uh, I can where? do so. Yes, uh, I think in the wiki is, is it. I think in the wiki is possible, right? Yes, I will. Uh, okay, I will upload them in the wiki in my talk. So it's me. Oh, okay. Uh, thanks for the talk. But and uh, just some things I figured out for a long, long time. It took me a while to find it. So my recommendations would be Adaway, which is an app which blocks, basically blocks every advertisement on your phone, so very handy. Um, of course, um, KeePass, which is a manager mm -hmm. for passwords uh, as a go-to. And the app I really like is Wi-Fi KeyShare. So it basically gives you a QR code of the Wi-Fi password of every Wi-Fi you locked in. So you can share it with anyone who has a barcode reader. Oh. So you can say, well, we're somewhere else and um, you will be at my home later. So you can share it oh, at nice. that moment without being in the Wi-Fi. So that makes uh, things easier. Mm -hmm. Cool. Thank you very much. That sounds very good. Is it working? Oh, no. yeah. It just takes a second. Um, sorry. This is just more a note. Um, it was a question about um, whether the Android store is in the G Play store. And it's not. Um, there's right now a fake Android store in there, so be careful. Oh, okay. 
In where? In the After Eight Store? Yeah, no, in the um, Google Play Store. Ah, okay. It is called After Eight Store, and it's um, its version number is hundred thousand plus. <laughs> like and it's making the and is there a real numbers. version? No, there's not, and there's also not so a real version. So that's what I thought. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. So please be aware, as yeah, I said in the beginning, it. there is no After Eight in the Google Play Store, and don't. Yes. Don't download the uh, the fake version, please. Yes, and it's also not in the uh, Apple App Store or whatever it's called. And you should download it on f-droid.org. Yes, correct. Or share it from someone. Where do the guys sit here? Hopefully, uh, when we want to learn more about Asteroid. So maybe uh, one that answered my question before. Uh, where can I, are there any people here on the Congress um, who are doing Asteroid development? And where can I find them? <laughs> yeah, I know, that, <laughs> but I'm a bit far away. Here are two developers, yeah. Just one more note um, about the transportation apps. I believe I believe you missed Offy or Uffy app, which recently moved to Android because I had a couple of hiccups with the Google Play Store. <laughs> is it free software? It is now. Uh, okay. And I believe you talked about not wanting to do. Um, uh, PGP encryption with K9 because you were afraid of losing your private key. I read, I haven't set it up myself yet, but I read that there is a possibility to generate another private key, a mm. sub key, oh, yeah, okay. you could use mm. and just skip the rest of your key. So if okay. you lose it, True. it's just that one sub key. True. Maybe I just miss it. If you're not religious about open software and you want to mix maybe most of Asteroid stuff with some stuff from the Google Play Store, did, did you did you mention Yelp? Or is that a no-no? This, uh, what is Yelp Store, um, which enables you to pick some stuff that you only get at the closed source store, and uh, which I like to use to mix and match, but that's a personal discussion. Mm. By the way, I think you're over here. Um, yes, I heard about it. Uh, actually, I never used it, but uh, and I always uh, forget about it. <laughs> so there's a Yelp store. Yelp store, I think using the Yelp store, you can get, if I'm correct, you can get all the apps from Google Play Store that for are for no cost available. Yeah, only those that are for no cost, because else you need this yeah. payment system. I just don't forget it because I don't uh, I don't like to use any binary blob on my phone, so this is no option for me. But yes, I mean, if you want to go the way from, you know, to get rid of Google, install a custom ROM without Google, use Android, and you really cannot, like. Um, you really need this one or two apps or so, then Yelp Store might help you to access the them from from the Google Play Store without having the need of a of a Google direct Google connection. But generally, I recommend to not use any binary blob on your phone. And you can for for the things that you want to really want to do, except of marketing stuff or maybe some games or whatever. The, the I, g I think the things that you necessarily need to do are all available in Afron. <coughs> I also personally only use Afron on my phone, but I feel a little bit excluded from communication communities like Signal. And I want to ask you whether, I mean, how, you, how you're handling it. Are you solely having contacts with Telegram, for instance, which also has some security flaws maybe, or I mean, without, <laughs> No, Signal is easy. You can install Signal with a side load. So you can download the APK from the web page 
you have a fingerprint to verify it's the there was no man in the middle and then you can do a side load install the apk and from then on signal itself can update itself without yeah okay. so that's how i would uh <coughs> i have uh, two more apps uh, one is Orfox, you know it, uh, it's uh, the, the, the Tor browser and the other one is Orbot which routes your whole uh, traffic through uh, the, the Tor network and the third uh, is uh, AF Wall Plus, uh, I don't know if you know it, it's, uh, it's a firewall with, uh, which uh, um, stops, uh, uh, blocks, uh, blocks the traffic from your uh, mobile outside uh, if you have i don't know uh, uh, apps from the google store also you can block the traffic also uh, in case they call home for example or yeah. what oh yeah okay what and uh, the uh, orfox orbot and af wall plus <coughs> Um, there is also one app I would recommend that's uh, called Wi-Fi Privacy Police, Wi-Fi with the dash in uh, the middle, um, and it stops uh, the Android from uh, sending broadcasting uh, frames which actually get tracked. So if you're interested in this, uh, I gave a talk with a um, colleague yesterday about Wi-Fi tracking. It's called, uh, it's actually in Germany, but it's called, uh, in German, but it's called uh, Track Me If You Owe. And um, there are lots of companies who do Wi-Fi tracking if m even if you are not connected to an access point and just have your Wi-Fi enabled. Uh, Wi-Fi uh, Privacy Police disables this by disabling every Wi-Fi that is not in your range currently. So if you, um, if you are interested in not getting, getting tracked in the real world, um, look, have a look at Wi-Fi Privacy Police. So, further questions? My dash. Uh, I just want to uh, say fast that if anybody uses uh, Google Mail with uh, K9, uh, you cannot put your regular Google password in because Google will complain. But you should uh, create uh, Double authentication, if you have the phone enabled together with email, it allows you to create tokens that you add to the app and you can create like thousands of them. So that helps with uh, non-Google phone because otherwise it's difficult to integrate Google services if you still have them, even if you don't have Google on your phone. And Maps Me is very good with favorites because you can collect places you've been to. Good with what? Favorites, that you can make a list of places you've been to and then it's they're very easy to access and very nice to place on the map so you can have tracking of places you visit often. And navigation between them, you can, well, you can't do it without GPS but you can basically get mapping easily for walking between them. Uh, if I remember correctly, if I stopped using the Google Play Store, then I aren't, I'm, uh, I am not able to use the Google notification server. Uh, have you uh, experienced downsides from this, or is the uh, how does F-Droid come up with that? That means the push notifications. Yes. No, actually, all my I have no, no zero Google on it. And I don't know how it works, but <laughs> I get <laughs> all the push notifications. I mean, sometimes they might, let's say, pff, I don't know. Sometimes they are late, but that's really seldom. Normally it works. Mm -hmm. um, I uh, disabled every Google service on my phone a few months ago, uh, actually because I uh, have seen that the Google services uh, access location information every few minutes. And when I said, disallow for this app, um, my battery uh,
dropped from uh, one uh, from two days to two hours. Um, and uh, there is one thing where I'm missing the notifications, and that's uh, the Twitter app, not the official app, but uh, there's a. Uh, I'm using one from the App Store, and that's the thing I miss. Uh, it just checks every few minutes. Um, most of the other apps have some uh, sort of uh, whatever it is, um, web socket or something. Um, and from my opinion, um, it even needs less uh, power than the Google uh, push notifications, which, uh, which actually um, are there to save power. So I'm not sure. More questions or um, apps you want to have man you want to have mentioned? Okay, so thank you very very much for your talk. Yeah, thank you very much for also for the nice uh, recommendations here.